property I sold. And then based on that, and based on a flow assumption, first in, first out, LIFO for, or, or uh, weighted average, I can determine the decrease in the inventory over that time period. And then I'll just do a journal entry in zero decreasing inventory and recording the related cost to get sold, possibly on a nightly basis, possibly on a weekly basis, possibly on a monthly or even yearly basis, depending on the method I'm using to track inventory outside uh, of the system. So that's a perpetual inventory uh, method that you could use. I'm sorry, that's a periodic inventory method because we're adjusting it periodically at the end of night, night, week, month, or year. And so then your next method is the perpetual method, the full service method. All right, so if we're doing a perpetual inventory system, now we want to have our inventory account go up, but also have a subledger tracking the inventory account uh, when it goes up. Now, normally if I go to my flow chart in a perpetual inventory system, this is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but I'm just using it to show the accounting flow, which is the same for most accounting cycles. On a perpetual inventory system, when we buy the inventory, we might buy it with just like a check form or a decrease of money out type of form, but we would be tracking items. We have to set up items in order to track it. Or we might do more of a full service system or a process of requesting the inventory with a purchase order and then receiving it with a bill, recording it. And then uh, once we have received it, uh, uh, then we pay the bill, right? So we could have, it depends on what kind of process we have to request our inventory. So if you're using basically the bank feeds to try to fit the bank feeds in uh, most clearly here or most directly, then we might just say it's a money out form. We purchase the inventory with an electronic transfer and try to enter it in that way, but also see if we can add the items so that we can track the inventory in the system. Or if you were having a method where you request the inventory, you would have a purchase order. That would be a deviation from a cash based kind of system. It, it would make more work than trying to create your books from just the bank feeds because the purchase order is a request of inventory. There's no cash actually happening. There's actually no impact on the financial statements. And you would only use a purchase order if you have sufficient amount of leverage uh, in your business dealings with your, per with your supplier to request the inventory to be shipped to you before you pay for it. And then when you get the inventory, it would then have a bill in it and you can enter the bill or pay the bill uh, at that point in time. And then of course, once we record the inventory on the books, we're gonna sell the inventory. Normally that would happen with an invoice or sales receipt form. But if you're trying to make it all automated in the bank feeds, you could imagine a system where you wait till it clears the bank and try and try to record revenue with a, with a deposit form, right? But the problem is, when you record the sales side of the transaction, you also want to be tracking the uh, the units that are sold, right? So, which means you have to track the items in the system if you're tracking that on a perpetual system within zero. All right, so if I go to the first tab, just note that if I hit the drop down when we purchase inventory, uh, you might first use a purchase order and then uh, enter a bill from the purchase order, or you might just pay for the inventory, you know, at the point in time that you're that you're purchasing the inventory, like you kind of would if you're an individual buying something from like Amazon or something, in which case you might use the bank feeds uh, for something to clear. So we're going to say, all right, let's pretend that is the case, but we're going to need an item. So we want to put our inventory items in place to track. So the items you can find by going to uh, the business dropdown and going to the products and services. So I'm gonna go into the products and services and I'm gonna set up a service item, the things that are usually populated when I make an invoice or something like that, the things I'm selling, the things I wanna be tracking on a unit basis as well as a cash basis. Let's add a new item. And I'm just gonna say this is gonna be uh, it or inventory, let's say inventory item one just generic name in it that's going to be the name of it and the purchase uh when i purchase them i'm going to say that uh let's keep let's keep see if i can keep it blank so i can purchase it enter the item 
when it comes through on the bank feed. See if it allows me to do that. I'm gonna say the purchase account is going to be going to, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna keep the same inventory account. I was gonna create two, but let's just put it to that same inventory one account. And then the sales price, let's say we sell them for like $500. Let's just make up a number here. Sales account. So the sales account, notice I have two sales accounts. This one uh, is usually sales often refers to selling of inventory items versus service items which have no inventory. And then if there's taxes involved in with the sale, like a sales tax or a usage tax, then you could set up your taxes as well. And that also, uh, the taxes also muddy up the ability to be able to make sales by waiting till something kind of clears the bank because uh, because the taxes themselves is going to be an accrual type of thing. You're going to have to put something on the books as a liability. We might talk about that a little bit more later, but let's go ahead and save that. So now we have our item. So now let's go into our banking again, account or accounting drop down bank accounts. And let's go into the drop down here and go into account transactions. And I'm gonna go into the reconcile item. I'm gonna look for a transaction on 10, 17. Next, 10, 17, I had a transaction I wanted to look for. So here's the one. So I'm gonna say that this, this was for the purchase of inventory. So let's go ahead and add the details on this one. And I'm gonna say this is Primerica 01 again. So it's gonna go to Primerica, uh, let's just say to Primerica. All right, I already have this one in there. Let's keep that. And then the reference is good. Now it gives me the ability to add an item here. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's see if I can add an item. There's item one. And notice it's removing the dollar amount. I tried to not put a dollar amount in the item so that it would keep the dollar amount here that we're that we have uh, on this side, but it's not doing that because it's gonna use zero as the item. So I could still say, okay, let's just say the unit, the unit price was 30 and that's gonna bring it back up to the 30 amount here. So that looks good. Before I do this, let me just change that item back. So I'm going to I'm going to go back to the item again. Business drop down. Uh, hold on a second. Business drop down. I'm going to go back to products and services. I'm not going to record this one and I'm going to put that $30 as the cost. So I'm going to go into this item and let's say that we want to edit the item and let's put that cost of $30. So it makes sure that it tracks the $30 cost. So there it is. Okay, so I'm just adding the $30 cost. Now let's go back into the accounting. Let's go back into the bank accounts. Let's go into the manage account, account transactions, and uh, reconcile, and then back to that transaction. All right, let's do this again. So we're in here. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna add the details for this $30 transaction and okay da, 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 and then i'm going to add the item and so now when i select the item there it is it's pulling in that 30 dollars now if you were to, to do it this way you'd have to make sure that whatever the item whatever you purchase down here you would have to actually fill in the items that match the total dollar amount of the 30 dollars so still this would be still kind of logistically difficult because most likely what what that what you would want to do is uh, is go up top and enter you know the purchase order and then the spend money form and use the bank uh, reconciliations to reconcile the transaction. But it is, I just want to show that it is possible uh, to do it to to run it this way. So because you can because it has the item field, which again is a little bit different than some other softwares. I'm not sure if that capacity is in like like the QuickBooks Online, so it's kind of interesting, and I kind of kind of like that they have at least the ability to do that in here. So what are we going to do when this happens? It's going to record the inventory is going to go up by 30, just like before, 
uh, and we're going to record a decrease to the checking account but also we have another account that will be created which will track the units of items that we're purchasing as well so let's go ahead and save it just to check that out and so save the transactions and but well, once a tax field i'm going to say tax exempt again taxes would throw uh, kind of an issue into this as well i don't want to get into that right now but i'll save. go ahead and save it all right so we're going to go up and say now i'm going to match it out so we'll say match it out and then so it's been reconciled if i go to the balance sheet and check it out we have our inventory account now has eighty dollars in it that first transaction was not being tracked perpetually the second one was 